Servicing old diesel Land Rover injectors. Part 2. Rebuilding using new parts. Two out of the four old injectors were serviced as shown in the previous episode. I felt the need to completely recondition them. So I bought some new nozzles and they were fitted to the cleaned up injector bodies. During this job I discovered one particular surprising problem which I soon rectified. More about that later. On the bench you can see that there are four new injector nozzles and two injectors that are rebuilt in the previous episode which are actually fine. I fitted new nozzles to every one of the injector bodies. This image shows the two injectors that I've already rebuilt and one halfway through the job. Removing the nozzle retainers is an incredibly difficult job. On every one of them it caused me problems. I watched a few YouTube videos showing people rebuilding these and, well, they were okay. One of the videos explained that you mustn't put the parts in the vise with the thread up against the vise jaws. Well, this is sort of common sense. I do a lot of work using my vise, the one on the bench, and I always use soft jaws. I fit pieces of brass angle to the jaws and then they don't mark the components. Don't forget, most of the time I work on very fragile, very small components that often need gripping very tightly in a vice. The only way I could successfully remove some of these nozzle retainers was to use heat. That was on three out of four of the injectors. And I really didn't need to heat the parts that much, certainly nowhere near red colour. I used the blowtorch in the outer part of the workshop, then one at a time I brought them into the main workshop, put them in the vice, and the parts were removed quite easily. I was thinking that maybe they'd been assembled using some kind of sealant. Anyway, on with the job. I'm using one of these nylon abrasive wheels to clean up the parts. These things can be dangerous. You definitely need to wear eye protection because the particles of nylon and abrasive tends to fly everywhere. And you really do not need to get this stuff in your eyes. Thinking about it, possibly a breathing mask would be a good idea. After cleaning up the injector bodies, it's very important to remove all traces of the abrasive and bits of nylon, so I'm using an airline to blow them through completely. And I did this a couple of times to make sure they were very clean. This is a central push rod, and I'm also cleaning this up. I want it to be nice and shiny, not rusty. I gave the nozzle end of each of these injectors a blast with WD-40 to make sure they were very clean. This is the nozzle that I've just heated along with the injector using the blowtorch and it's very free indeed. A good fit in the bore, but I'm definitely going to use new nozzles. And here is one of the nozzles in its packaging. That is, if I can actually get into the packaging. Maybe I'm doing this wrong, I ended up using my small bandsaw to cut around the centre of the plastic case. That way it was very easy to withdraw the nozzle, which feels just like the one that I've taken out of the old injector. It's assembly time. Maybe this is not necessary, but old habits die hard, I apply a little bit of oil first. Then I fit the brand new squeaky clean nozzle in the correct place on the injector body. I've just mentioned how difficult it was to remove the part that secures the nozzle to the injector. On the first injector that I rebuilt, using a serviceable but old nozzle, I left it connected to the pump overnight. And the next day when I looked at it, still connected to the pump, and there was a wet ring around the nozzle retainer. And believe me, when I refitted this retainer, I really talked up the spanner. It was securely fitted but there was some diesel leaking from around the edge. I wondered if, when they were first assembled, some sort of hydraulic sealant had been used, because when this retainer was holding the nozzle in place, diesel was definitely leaking from around the edge. I am no expert on diesel engine injectors, but I thought I would use some Loctite 542, which I use on a lot of the steam engine parts that get very hot, and it seems to seal threads very well. That would also explain why this particular part of the injector was very difficult to remove. Here's the injector back in the vise and I'm really talking up this part. And with a bit of help from a hammer, 
it's very tight indeed. The spanner is a really good fit. Now all I need to do is fit the push rod, followed by the coil spring, and then the adjuster. Initially, I screwed the threaded injector in by hand. Then I connected it to the hydraulic test pump that I bought. These injectors need to blow at around 2000 psi. It's not near that at the moment, but it's looking promising even at a lower pressure. To adjust the pressure on the spring, you need to use an Allen key like this in the end. By repeatedly moving the pump handle and adjusting the spring pressure, you arrive at the correct blow-off pressure. It's a bit like a very high pressure safety valve. I repeated this part of the job for all four of the injectors once they were reassembled. This is not a difficult job, particularly the testing part and the tweaking of the tension of the coil spring. Here are the others being tested, and they're all about the same. The spray pattern looks very similar, and they're all blowing off very well at just under 2000 psi. Really though, I'm using 2000 psi as the benchmark, and it seems to work okay. And that is it for my experience with Land Rover Series 3 injectors. They're all looking very clean, and they all seem to work okay. Well, on the test pump, anyway. I won't really know for certain until I fit them to the 24 litre diesel engine in the Land Rover, but I can't do that because I'm painting the bonnet and it isn't on the Land Rover itself. And that is it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful, or at least interesting. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.